the light went yesterday and we had to say goodbye to Stephanie and Philip and we didn't get to show them everything but we promised them that we would film a couple of extra things for you um, that you can catch up on later. What we're going to show you now is the only remnant apart from the cellar of the old medieval chateau that was there before the 19th century one and I have someone here to tell you all about it. We know very little about this tower because the, all the archives of the medieval chateau were burnt during the French Revolution. But this, uh, this tower has some very interesting architectural features that are actually quite similar to our own tower in Rosières. Let me show you. Would this have been attached to the main chateau or is it a sort of corner of a moat thing like Erin's? No, I think this, um, the Napoleonic map of the medieval chateau shows a wall coming from this tower uh, across, the, across the yard and there used to be another tower on the other side. Ah, oh so you have a record of what the, the shape of it was? Yes, we do. Look at this little place. I bet you used to play up here when you were little, didn't it, you? <laughs> it, was a, it was a great playroom when I was oh a child. No. There used to be beehives in the um, an, along this wall. You didn't play in here whilst there were beehives, did you? Yeah, there were beehives. There were empty beehives. Oh right. <laughs> and the, there, these uh, two holes were probably because it was used as a pigeon house at some point. Oh. And the interesting bit that I was really excited to find when I was a child is here. So there is a little window uh, that uh, shows all the landscape the kilometers away. And the interesting bit I found is that when I was a child, I realized that the wooden frame of this uh, window where would go and then there's a plank. No! Ah, there's uh, a spider plank! It's a and, spider plank! And there's a dead pigeon here. Well, there's half a dead pigeon here. Okay, it's the spiders I but, have issues but with. But look here. Okay. Watch the spiders, they jump sometimes. No, they don't! What's down there? What is it? What is it? Is it for pouring boiling oil on people? No, it's not. You remember at ours? Yeah. We have a ventilation chimney. Oh, so there was a toilet at the bottom. Maybe not a toilet, but, but just, just to just renew to... the air. So that if on they the were sort of, um, besieged, they'd be able to have fresh air. Exactly. And stuff. Ah. So the. Um, the, it's really interesting because we're in two very different regions yeah. of France, but we find some similar archaeological features. How interesting. I don't know exactly how old this tower is. It's probably somewhere between the 12th and 15th century, uh, probably more uh, like 12th century. Uh, but the, yeah, I was really excited to find this feature. Yeah and to, to discover that it was actually the same thing at ours. Wow, did you play at this little chair? I probably did at some point. That's so cute. And this uh, used to be my desk when I was a child. No. Oh, that's so cute. Oops, Stop breaking my desk. <laughs> Hooligan. <laughs> Sorry. Would you like to see the ground floor? I would very much like to see the ground floor. Are there more dead pigeons in there? Oh, probably. They're probably the other half of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good with heights. <laughs> what I really like about the cellar is that the entrance is completely covered with jasmine and so you, can't, you can hardly see the door from outside. And we used to play a lot here when we were children. And it's a really, really special place. We call it La Cavolou, which means the wolf, the wolf cave. 
you can imagine a wolf living in here. This room is completely vaulted. This is a cupboard that used that was used in the past for uh, maturing cheese. There would have been shelves in the, the um, cupboard and they would have laid the cheese here to mature. He's Amy and Clément, <laughs> coming with the powerful light. <laughs> it's my phone, I'm afraid. Oh. Where would you like me to illustrate? So I'd highlight? like to show you this Ooh. bit, which is where a room with no light where we used to have great fun <laughs> when we were children. <laughs> The ceiling is quite low, it's less than one meter high. And there are remains of children playing here. A lantern. Do you mean the remains of yeah. the children or the remains of what they were playing? Well, with? possibly both. <laughs> so we used to play a lot here and all my nephews did as well. It's a small circular room. And we used to come here with candles and play in the dark. Um, sometimes there would be bats in on the ceiling, hanging down from the ceiling. Today I can't see any. And there are these little uh, loopholes all around the, the cellar. So I really wonder the past use of this, uh, this room. This is the middle floor of the tower. It's a room that I've always seen uh, full of junk. But the, the interesting features here are the, um, the clay tiles on the floor. And I've always seen this piece of furniture being stored here. And it, this is a 19th century pool table with six legs that are uh, here. And I guess it is the original uh, table that was in the billiard uh, room that, oh, that uh, you showed Stephanie. That, that I showed Stephanie. Oh, wow, look at that. So these are the legs oh, with cast uh, with the uh, copper feet. Yeah. I find it really interesting. Yeah. A little sledge. <laughs> I love this walled garden. It's incredible. It See, is really beautiful. It is a really beautiful walled garden with the beautiful fountain. It's not uh, the prettiest at this time of year. No. Are they kiwis? Uh, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow! Look at those. Mmm, it's all warm in the sun. There's some lavender that we use in the summer for uh, making cushions for the, oh, the, for laundry, the laundry wardrobe. I'm all. <laughs> I think he's not sure about your cue. He asked me for it and then he threw it on the floor. Before he knew which dress. <laughs> your memories of round here of this garden when you're growing up and stuff because you're obviously a passionate gardener and so was your mum um what do you want to bring to our place from it i like the the way it's organized and the well the fact that it's a wood garden which mm. we have at our place but the also the fact that uh, there used to be crops only around 
and uh, that we could uh, leave off the, the garden. I think it's... Uh, there's also... What I'm trying to recreate at ours is the waterworks. Because the, there is this pond that was the primary uh, spring for the, the water, which is fed by another pond uh, at the, the front of the house. And that pond is fed by a spring up in the mountain. And we have exactly the same uh, water management at ours. That, uh, so we've been piping the, the old cistern and they'll uh, pipe the overflow of that cistern to feed the ponds in the vegetable garden and hopefully we'll be able to have uh, trats in the, the ponds because it's going to be running water and use the, the water to fertilize the crops because we'll have uh, fish, fish poo in the, <laughs> the ponds so that's really good fertilizer so hopefully we'll have both fish and vegetables from the garden Right, we're back from your sister's house and uh, it's time to start planting our own garden, isn't it? Is it? Mark what? has numerous degrees in agriculture, uh, but for some reason it's me who's decided this year um, to be the uh, chief gardener. <laughs> and so... I have a lot of expectations. <laughs> Uh, the main expectation you should have is that I'll get really, really angry if anybody eats my vegetables apart from us, i.e. the peacocks, the deer, the boar. I may have to sit up all night watching the garden. Mm, please do. Um, or send pepper out. So I wanted to discuss with you because I, I know aesthetically what I like mm -hmm. and I know what food I want to eat, but I don't know the process by which I get to that point. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to employ you as my main consultant. Um, I'm afraid the wages aren't good, but I'd like to. <laughs> I'm expensive, that's a shame. <laughs> How about pineapple upside down cake? Is that a good payment? Mm, it's okay. Yeah. Well, before we start, we might show people around mm -hmm. uh, the garden, and then we can have a discussion about what seeds we've got, what we want to plant, if we need any others, when I do it, and I'll take notes and be a very good student. Good, perfect. This terrace is interesting because the the middle of the wall collapsed at some point mm. and you can see that it's been rebuilt in oh, yeah. a uh, slightly different way uh, as it used to be. And what I find really interesting is this stone here yeah. and these three stones here. Oh, yeah. It looks like there was a start of a vault uh, going all the way across the terrace like this. Yeah. And there would have been a niche like the the ones yeah, above yeah. Uh, on the the upper terrace, but this one bigger and in a central position. Yeah. And the you can see actually in the wall that uh, there are some stones of a similar size, like this, for yeah. instance, that are slightly uh, oh, angled. Yeah. And I think it's just that the when the wall collapsed. They just rebuilt it without yeah. really uh, without rebuilding the, the vault. Yeah. But I think one day it would be really nice to rebuild it. Yeah. And possibly do a recess in the That'd terrace. Be amazing, wouldn't it? To do a little oh. summer house, a buried summer house oh, inside wow. under the the terrace. You could probably go quite far, couldn't you? You could go all the way to the the pond. Uh, so you could have a little room and oh, put some some tables and uh, and things and have a little secret uh, 
secret hiding amazing. place and, and when and you get in the canicules in the heat waves mm. we could go in there yeah. and sleep in there if you want yeah. what do you think of my I, master I like plan? your plan I like your master plan push me over it depends how nice you are to this me. This is my notebook. It's baby. not your notebook, it's mine. Look. My notes. My notes. Your notes. It's my notebook. <laughs> this is these are all my notes from the greenhouse. That I well, really this is the need. garden all oh, right. Yeah, it's garden related. Let's put garden. Mark. Garden. Slash mark. <laughs> notebook. <laughs> well, you can see it's a notebook, so you don't you don't really need to write that it's a notebook. Gosh, you're annoying. She's <laughs> so annoying. No. Slash no. mark, you forgot. No, it's mine. It's mine as much as yours. Oh, look, it's blossom on the tree. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, what are we going to plant this year? Can I talk to you first about my wheat? Yes, please. Um, I would like to plant wheat, as I told you last year, so that we can try and have um, wheat for the chickens, which might make it a bit cheaper to feed them, mm -hmm. um, and wheat so I can make my own flour. I see. And you, when I mentioned that, you came up with some funky old wheat, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Will you tell me about it, because I've completely forgotten. It it's Emma wheat. Yeah. It is one of the first varieties that was domesticated by man. <gasps> it originates from the Golden Crescent that you know a lot about. And uh, nowadays it's uh, hardly grown anywhere. So it's an yeah. ancient form of um, wheat before it yes. was modified and selected to make mass production. Yes, ma'am. And what are, what are the special uh, characteristics about it? Why do I want to plant I have, it? Sell it to me, sell it to me. I have no clue. Uh, I just bought the packet because I didn't know what it was and I thought it was uh, a cool stuff to try. Okay, so. um, how much is there in the packet? Because what I'm thinking I would like to do is on the bottom terrace, I would like to do an entire wheat field there because it really doesn't make any sense to do a small amount does it of it. Mm. Um, and so if I'm going to do the whole bottom terrace, what does that does that say roughly what? Uh, up to? Yeah, two to four square meters. <laughs> <laughs> you have two packets, so you can uh, you can do up to eight square meters. <laughs> and how big is the bottom terrace? About, uh, about uh, 400 square meters. <laughs> so nearly. But we've also got some long straw wheat, haven't we? Mm -hmm. uh, from the farm in Suffolk um, that uh, my dad helps out on a lot mm -hmm. with Paul and Tobias and Emma. And that's beautiful wheat. It's um, as it's called long straw wheat. They harvest it in traditional way so that the straw can be used for thatching because not all straw um, from wheat harvests can be used and also modern combine harvesters destroy it all. So they harvest it in a traditional way, which is very interesting. And so we've got some over here from last year when dad brought it over and we could plant a patch of that as well. Mm -hmm. And then shall I just chuck in some chicken? Objection, Johanna. Your Honor. Um, would you like to have some seeds for next year? Yeah. So you may not want to sow them together because they will uh, cross, cross pollinate. Oh, will they? Uh, yes. Oh no! And so you'll have uh, well, maybe potentially interesting uh, hybrid wheat, but. Uh, Can I not stop them from cross pollinating then? If you stand guard over the yeah, bees, yeah, you, no, not the bees. It's uh, pollinated by the wind. So oh, you is can it? stand like this to break the wind. <laughs> how how far apart do they have to be to not cross pollinate? 
Like, could I do one patch up here and one patch down there? Mm, it would reduce the cross pollination. But, but it wouldn't uh, be pure. No. A well drat, basically. You could plant it at the at the back of the house, the back above on the, the chicken terraces run. that we haven't cleared yet. And uh, <laughs> when do I need to plant it? Uh, no. Well, it says between uh, March and May, but uh, the earlier the better. Okay. Ignat made preps for breakfast today and um, he brought out the squirty cream and seeing as I'm going to be doing heavy rotating all day, I thought I might treat myself. And this is a normal breakfast at Rosière. I really like the rotavator. Um, it's one of my favorite machines, but it is quite hard work. Um, so I'm looking for a good workout today and I hope I get it all done. And it looks like it might be raining, but I'm British, so I can handle that. Don't worry about that. It's uh, just a bolt that went loose. Sorry.
Um, Clement slept for two thirds of it. <laughs> and I think um, like the noise of her return. <laughs> yeah, I was going right past him and everything. And I'm going to wait now until after the next frost to plant the wheat. <laughs> I don't know what's brought you to our channel now, but I hope that if you get nothing else from it, you get to see um, what it's like to do something that you're not very good at, but to keep trying and maybe get somewhere. Because I tend to be pretty bad at most things. I'm bad at craft, I'm bad at DIY. I'm bad at sewing, I'm bad at farming, but it doesn't tend to deter me. <laughs> and so at the end of the day, I find myself looking at a beautifully ploughed, okay, not beautifully ploughed, a ploughed. <laughs> quite, quite, quite beautifully, I'm quite impressed actually. A ploughed field and I'm stood there looking out across the Alps and it's something that I've achieved and I've done it. I may have broken the rotavator a little bit along the way, but um hopefully if i can do something anyone can do it okay so i've got some gardening jokes for you i see <laughs> i've been working on this do you want to hear them yes please so the neighbor came around the other day and saw me organizing all my plants alphabetically and he said oh how do you find the time? I said, it's easy, it's next to the sage. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen, didn't you? Uh, well, I made it before you told me. Okay, okay, another one, another one. <laughs> I've got this friend. <laughs> she only eats blood. I don't know if you have heard of her. No, heard of her before. <laughs> her before. Heard of her before. 